Now we go all the way back to 1930. Two great players, two great personalities. And it's going to be great to talk with them. Would you please welcome firstly from Collingwood, Harry Collier. And from Footscray, Alan Hopkins. Legendary Collingwood rover Harry Collier played 15 highly successful seasons with the Black and Whites before dropping the curtain on his illustrious career in 1940. After all those years bursting out of packs and kicking goals, nothing could have prepared Harry for that telephone call to say he'd won a Brownlow. Well, I got a terrible surprise, a happy surprise. You know, I was really shocked. I was home there with my wife just about to get a bit of tucker and uh, I couldn't eat any tucker after that. You know, it was such a shock, but it was a very pleasant surprise. For more years than he'd care to remember, 81-year-old Harry and his wife have left behind the chill of a Melbourne winter for the warm, salubrious sunshine of a Queensland one on the Gold Coast. Spending three months of the year up north, only a stone's throw away from the bears, the days are now filled with rest, relaxation, a bit of gardening, and of course, a yarn over a few beers with his old cobbers about the days gone by. Alan Hopkins will always be remembered for his bow-legged stance, which earned him the nickname Banana Legs, and how the history books cheated him, running second in 1929, 30 and 31 for the coveted Brownlow medal. Albert Collar beat me in 29, Judkins won it in 30, and uh, Aiden Bunn won in 31. A lot of water has passed under the bridge since parting company with the Bulldogs in 1934. For several years, Alan and wife Nell were at home with the cows, helping out on their son-in-law's dairy farm at Yarrawea, but of late have found greener pastures in the peaceful country town of Cobram, situated on the banks of the Murray River. It's here, at 86 years of age, that the determination and stance remains. For instead of gracing football grounds, the little dynamo still continues an active life, cracking a golf ball around nine holes at Baruga Golf Club, or takes pleasure potting the black in a serious game of eight ball at the local senior sits. I wouldn't say a good game, I'm only a scratcher, but I enjoy it, no worries about that. I meet good people and I have a lot of fun, play a couple of times a week, Sunday, Wednesday afternoon and Sunday morning. After 61 years of marriage and a handful of grandchildren, it's amazing where the years have gone. For it only seems like yesterday to Hoppy that he donned his long white shorts and caused havoc with the opposition. Well, 59 years is a long time to wait. Let them wait no longer. Firstly, to Alan Hopkins. Harry, now just be quiet for a moment, I want to talk to Harry. I can say the word. I know you haven't, that's what worries me. Harry, six premiership sides. Yes. The one that interested me was 1927, when I think there are only three goals scored in the whole match, 213 to 17. What were you playing on them? That's right. Monday yeah, it was a rough old track. Uh, it had rained all night Friday night. Uh, the water was about a foot deep on the top. There was a bit of talk of... Uh, the game been abandoned for the day, but uh, mudlarks, as Collingwood were known as then, uh, of course we won the the bout like the uh, between the uh, selectors and the delegates decided to play the game because the league, as usual, didn't want to lose the bloody money. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, next question, Harry. Next question, Jock McHale, a legend. But how would his tactics apply today? Would he be successful? Well, uh, Jock, he wasn't a great footballer, I believe. I didn't see much of him. But as a brain man in football, McHale would hold his own anywhere. I'd say Jock would have been a champion coach still today. Uh, and, then you, and then you compare him with a fellow like, uh, what they call him, Kango Kennedy. And uh, at the moment, Kanga don't know where he's going. <laughs> no, they're having a bit of a bad trot at the moment, but never mind. The Coventry brothers, Gordon and Sid, who was the best? Who was the best? Who was the best? Well, I'd say that's a pretty difficult question. Uh, as I remember, I think old Nuts Coventry, K 
kicked 1,299 goals. Well, that's plurry yard to beat. <laughs> After being a player for 18 years, uh, rubbed out in his last year for eight games, he would have topped the 13,000. And then, when you think of old Sitter, he's been the only captain to captain four premierships on end. See, I see blokes sitting around here tonight. There's a bloke in front of me, a dicky. He captained three, but they never got to old sitter. So I'd call that, I'd call that a dead eight. <laughs> On the subject of brothers, did you and your brother, Lita, plan games at all, or did you just run out and see what unfolded? No, we, we got our nuts together occasionally. <laughs> Now, I know what you're meaning or thinking. No. But, uh, you don't, actually. No, but Albert and I, like, we were, you know, pretty uh, keen. You know, we were keen on the game. And we were naturally calling with kids living across the, uh, the ground from the ground and the school. And every minute we got after school, or any time at all, see them training, we used to watch the the top players, and we'd always do a bit of studying up, especially on a Thursday night uh, before any game, I'll late and I, and uh, we had four, uh, uh, I nearly lost me teeth then. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you could, if you could too, stop in a moment so I can have a chat with Alan, but yeah, go on. I was just going to say, we had four, we had four other brothers, uh, Pinky and Billy, and uh, Bill and George, and they all try to play football, but I'd say Lee and I were the luckiest. Uh, I don't know why, but uh, we were the luckiest out of the six to play football. Thanks, sir. Uh, uh, don't go away, Harry. Don't, don't, don't go away, just stop talking for a moment. Um, Alan, yeah. Foots Grey champion. The difference in those days between the VFA and the VFL, was it great? Oh, it was a big margin. Shane, it was a different try the football altogether, really. Was it that great? Because in 1924, Footscray, did they not whip Essendon? They beat Essendon. I mean, Footscray were in the VFA. VFA, yeah, and they played a charity match, Footscray and Essendon, for the uh, charity match it was, and we knocked them off. Knocked Essendon off because Essendon won the premiership that year, but they had a different system and they got beat in the final. So <laughs> that's, the system was spent percentage rise, you know. <laughs> and uh, they had the best percentage, they became premiers. Now, you, you'd never been to the MCG, No, you? I hadn't, really. So uh, how did you get there? I walked. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you take the tram? Now, go on, tell the truth. I was frightened to get on it because <laughs> I might have got robbed. <laughs> so I walked all the way from the Flinders Street station to the uh, Melbourne Cricket Ground. And I thought, oh, the, the crowd's going that way. It must be down that way somewhere. <laughs> 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 That nickname, Banana Legs. Banana Legs? That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Oh, yes, but I wasn't Banana Legs, I was Pleasure Bent. <laughs> oh, golly. Did you want to say something, Harry? Yeah, I would like to say something. When I was a kid, Poppy was an old man. Oh, thank you, see? You're only three years old and Oh, well, you looked older. Oh. <laughs> I can remember it, foot's grey. I'll go and sit down. <laughs> You'd see this old bloke. This old bloke, what do you mean? In the bloke? middle, when the ball was bounced. Next minute, down the forward line, kicking a goal. Next minute, bo uh, ball bounced again. Where'd you think up he was? Down defending the goal. So he was a real champion, and I've always thought that Hopkins in my thoughts, truly should have won that medal, you know, on his Pat Malone when we were three tied. But another little thing I'd just like to say, when, when, no, just a minute. Sorry, when, stupid of me to even just talk. Just a minute, anyhow, we'll put the quid in if there's extra quid to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Payne, I'll pay it. <laughs> what I wanted to say, uh, Sandy, was, the year that Footscray knocked off Estman, who do you think was captain?